I visited the town, and uh, I really love it. And um, I'll talk to you guys today about the artist's guide to living a magical life. So my passion is learning. I love learning. That's what I like the most. Once someone asked me if you could be millionaire and you wouldn't have, you didn't have to do anything, what would you be doing? And then I thought about it, and what I came in with was I would um, just go to school all my life and learn stuff. And uh, I did a lot of school, and I love to learn everything. It took me a long time before I found out my passion was learning. I studied science, almost became a computer programmer. So it, it took me a while before I found my passion. And I did a lot of school, almost became a computer programmer. I studied science, I studied film. My dad imports wine, so I work with my dad. I was a wine advisor for 10 years before I started doing art. And, um, you know, uh, learning is not really a job, so. I didn't really know what to do, and I kept studying different things until uh, I I didn't know what to study, and there was an art class, so I went to take an art class because I was like, I'll do that. I always liked drawing when I was a kid, and I thought I would do that until I found what I would study next, and then I figured out that when I do art, uh, I could learn all sorts of stuff. So if I like uh, cars one day, I can learn about cars. I can draw cars. I can study cars. And if I like something else the next day, like trees, then I can study trees and draw trees. And I can uh, study all sorts of stuff and learn all sorts of stuff, but still be doing the same job, which is an artist. So um, this is some of the art that I do. I love to draw plants, and I'll talk a little bit more about this uh, after. So I'm going to tell you a bit about uh, what I did. So if I would talk to you about who I am, I could tell you that I work at Imaginism Studios for about 10 years. and. I used to teach life drawing at Sheridan College. I was the third year animation uh, life drawing teacher. And that was, uh, life drawing was really uh, my passion. And I also do a workshop that is, uh, this is my house and um, I welcome people to come study with me and they move in with me for 30 days and I teach them about drawing, painting, and uh, spirituality as well. When I tell you about me, I could tell you that uh, I did some concept art for movies. I, I did some uh, alien fish for Men in Black Tree, and that's how I look in the movie. But when you do concept, you do stuff very, very early in a movie. So often it takes a long time before it comes out. And also, they look always a little different than the original stuff because there's a, a lot, there's two years almost that go from the concept to the finish. I did some characters for Brave Little Toaster, but they were going to do a live action movie. But I think they canceled it because it's been a little while. And that was uh, really fun to do. That was with uh, John Stevenson that directed uh, Kung Fu Panda and uh, Don Han that produced uh, Beauty and the Beast. That was the first movie to win an Oscar for best film before there was an uh, animated section for, uh, for the Oscar. So it was out of all the film, it was uh, the first animated movie to win an Oscar. Um, I could tell you that I do a cover for a children's book. My real passion, besides learning, is to do a children's book. That's the uh, other children's books that I did. That was another children's book cover that I did. But all this is bullshit. This is not where I am. I could tell you all these things, but who I truly am has nothing to do with that. All this stuff that I did before was me 
searching for myself. And usually, when you search for yourself, you search on the outside. And you go sometimes really far to try to find yourself. And when you find yourself, is when you stop looking on the outside, but you look on the inside. And when you do that, um, you find your heart. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. And I'm going to tell you really how you can use this to do art. So, who I really am if I'm not all these things I just told you about. I'll explain that to you over the, the rest of the talk. So, I had a lot of interest in my life. I told you I like to study all sorts of things and I always change my mind. So, when I was a kid, my mom brought me some little books that I used to make. I used to make little children's books when I was a kid. I used to love doing art. My mom was an architect, and uh, there was always paper and markers and all sorts of pencil around, so it was really easy to take stuff. Um, I always liked spirituality. Even when I was a kid, uh, I, I was thinking of becoming like a Buddhist monk when I was really, really young. And uh, I'll tell you something a little embarrassing. Um, when I was a kid, I thought maybe I was Jesus. But I wasn't sure. So when I turned uh, 34, I was like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> it's salt. <laughs> so uh, meditation is something I always like. It took me a long time to start because I didn't know really how to do it. But I used to go to a lot of life drawing classes. When I was at school at Sheridan, there was extra life drawing every night, so I used to go every day. I used to go seven days a week, so I was doing over 20 hours of life drawing a week. And um, to me, it was like a meditation because you're in a room and you're it's in silence, no one talks, and you're just thinking and thinking and thinking. And it was like the thing I loved the most about college. So. My favorite thing in the world, when I was a kid, I was like, I never want to work. I just want to play all my life. And all this was different things I was doing in my life. It was all different puzzle pieces. When I was a teenager, I used to write. And then I stopped writing, and then I started doing art. And then uh, I, I, I was doing less art, and then I studied, like, spirituality and Buddhism. And I used to always stop something to do something else. But at some point in my life, I realized that all my different interests were puzzle pieces, and when they came together, it was making one image, which was me. And that I didn't need to stop to do things. I could do everything at the same time. So uh, this kind of model, that was me finding my art, and now I do everything at the same time. So this is inspired by nature, because nature works in a symbiotic way, where um, the forests are an ecosystem, and everything collaborates together. So now I work all the interests of my life as in a symbiotic way. So I like shamanism, plants, spirituality, writing, drawing. So now I draw things about nature and spirituality and plants, and I write about it. So whatever I do in all these interests, it all, it's all one. So the most important thing for me is uh, unity. Everything is one. And um, for me, uh, the heart is unity. So I'm going to talk to you a bit more about that. When you find your heart, the whole universe opens up to you. I think your heart is the hub to the universe. When you really go there, the mind just focuses on all sorts of different things. But the heart is just a bit like a, a peripheral. You know when you look in your peripheral vision? When you drive, you see everything. You don't focus on little things. So the mind is a lot like a, a focal way to look at things, but the heart is just peripheral. It's uh, unity. So this is who I truly am, and I'm going to explain to you how I can use this in art. 
So for me, art is learning about yourself. The more you learn about art, the more you learn about yourself, the more you learn about you think. And I find uh, the biggest part of finding who you are is to find who you're not. So it's to discard all the stuff that you're not. And when you do that, there's not much left. And for me, all there's left was this. So I'm going to show you how I use my heart and love to create stuff. <laughs> Another thing that I learned, I had, a, I had a dream once where I was walking with giants and I asked them all sorts of questions. One thing I asked them was, what's the meaning of the universe? And they told me that the meaning of the universe was to play, to just play like a child because uh, kids do everything from the heart. Kids play for no reason. They just play for the fun of playing. And I think that's how we should do art. Also asked them about who I was, and they told me I was a mountain. So if you know me, and uh, for people that know me, like Anastasia, um, I'm a mountain because I help people get better at art and to climb to learn about themselves. And also, I'm a mountain because for my friends and the people I know and my students, they always know where to find me. In a mountain, you always know where it is, and it's not going anywhere. So, so how can I use all this stuff in art? So, for me, um, how can I use all this in what does what does this have to do with art? Everything. So, to me, unity is the main principle, the main technique that I that I use when I draw. And unity is love, and it's being present. Being present is a really, really amazing thing. So, <laughs> we'll talk. The rest of the talk is going to be about these things. Unity, love, being present, gratitude, learning, and art. So for me, all these things are exactly the same. So let's see how we can use all this to learn art. So we'll start with unity. So unity is the idea that everything is one. Um, I once, in that same uh, dream I was telling you about, um, these giants, they gave me a key, and they told me, unity and variety is your key to learn anything that you want. So everything that I do in art is based on that one principle of unity and variety. And there's a balance between both. So how do I use unity in painting? So this is a painting of a name that I did uh, from a photo reference. And it looks pretty realistic, and there's this balance at the bottom between unity and variety. So how I make things look realistic like this is I don't try to copy the details of things. I copy the balance between unity and variety. So I'm going to zoom in on this ape, and something interesting is going to happen. You're going to see how it looks from close. From far away, it looks realistic. And when we zoom in on it, at some point, your brain is going to start to to take that. What it's looking at is weird. Do you guys see how it's a bunch of scribbles? It's so not realistic from close. And <laughs> to do these scribbles, to me, it's also to be in my heart, and it's fun. And it's to draw like a kid. I draw like this. And it's really fun. And when I do fun stuff like this, I feel like a child. I feel like I'm in my heart, and I just have fun to do art. So it looks really, really rough and childish from close. But when you look at it, you can still see the scribbles. And when you go away, then it starts to look really realistic. It's because, in my opinion, um, your brain doesn't really look at things. It's a bit... When you draw hair, 
if when I look at all you guys' hair, you don't have much to look when you look at me. But when I look at you guys' hair, um, my brain is like, I know, I know what hair is. Hair is a bunch of little lines. And if you guys ever drew hair as a bunch of little lines, you, you know what I'm talking about. It looks terrible. But when you look at hair, you just get a feeling from the hair. And to me, um, that feeling, it's a hard connection. And I think everything we look at, we feel it. And the way I break the feeling of something is by a balance between unity and variety. So you can look at some people's hair. Every hair has unity and variety, and there's a balance. Some have more unity, more variety. And I think you can paint any texture by finding the right balance between unity and variety. So all I paint is unity and variety. It's not, I don't paint hair, I don't paint skin, I don't paint fur, I just paint unity and variety. So I don't let my mind tell me what it thinks it is. <laughs> so let's go back on this. So here's another one. It also looks real, and we're going to zoom on that one as well. And you see at the bottom, I made a little diagram of the balance between unity and variety. So on the left, you got unity, which is more plain. Variety is variation. And in the middle, you got a mix of both. And if I zoom in on this, it looks real, and at a certain point, um, it just you just see all the scribble. So your brain, when you look at this from far away, your brain pretends that it knows what it is. Your brain is like, oh, I know what this is. It's uh, some monkey skin, but it's because it feels right. It feels like mon monkey skin, so your brain pretends that it knows what it is. And then you can uh, just show your brain how you trick it. And why this feel like monkey skin is because when I look at that, it's got a certain balance between unity and variety. And um, I try to achieve, to achieve that right balance. So this is another one. And then at this point, maybe you tell yourself, maybe this is just a trick, like a, a little trick to paint monkey skin. But do you see how rough it is? But from far away, it looks it looks pretty realistic. So that's not just a trick to paint monkey skin. The next one is still going to be a monkey. I, I use that also when I do a concept art. And here I paint a pug. So let's see if that's just a trick to paint monkey stuff. So if I zoom on it, you're going to see that it's the exact same thing that I use for this. So how can it look like pug fur and then like monkey skin, even though it's the same scribbling? It's because the scribbling, what it really is, it's variety. So variety, it doesn't really matter how you do it. You see I made four little examples there. It doesn't matter how it's made. What matters is the amount that is there, and the relationship and balance it has with the unity. So all you do, it doesn't matter. What matters is the amount is, and the relationship. So let's go to the next image in there. I also use this in anything I can paint. This is a painting exercise that I do. And I try to keep this under 30 minutes. But when you do five in a row, you get faster and faster. So if I zoom on this, on the left you see the picture, and on the right, so that's doing studies, texture studies from photos. So you see the row says reference, that's a picture, and on the right is the painting. So if I'm gonna zoom on the first one, you see, we still have that same scribble. So it's interesting that the scribble works with everything. It's because it's not about the scribbling. It's about the variety that it brings in the balance of unity and variety. And you don't have to use scribble. You could use anything. It could be lines. It could be, you could draw little A's. You could do anything. 
And but I like the scribble because for me it takes me right back to kindergarten when I used to just draw like this. So this worked with all sorts of stuff. This is some homework that I gave to my students that I teach in my workshop. And uh, you have the pictures on the left, picture on the top. All the left one are pictures. And um, I can teach that, and it works for anyone that tries it. Uh, we're going to zoom on that coconut. And it looks real, and you're going to see from close. Like, how can this look like a coconut, right? So the cool thing, I was telling you that learning about art is learning about yourself. So this way, I learn about myself, how I can trick myself into seeing things. And I have to pay a lot of attention to how things feel like. So visually, I think everything we look at, before it gets our, in our brain, it gets translated to a balance between unity and variety. And that's what I paint, and I can make stuff look like uh, anything. So let's uh, we'll zoom in on another one. So all this is not my stuff. This page is all from uh, uh, students that studied with me. And they all did that in uh, 30 minutes. So see, we zoom on this, and that's a whole bunch of scribbles too. And the idea with this is to make stuff feel right not to copy the details, but to copy the feeling we get from looking at these things. This one I love. I think it looks great. And when you zoom on it, it's a whole bunch of scribble, and it looks like a five years old painted this. And I think it's awesome. <laughs> so that's how I use Unity before to do paintings, now to do texture. And I use that in absolutely everything, because for me, it's the key to understand anything. I use this in character design. I, um, I organize things very well. I create a texture for the hair. And if you notice, um, here I got something light, then I got the hair, and everything is really organized. You got dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light. So there's a nice rhythm between the unity and the variety. And this is well organized. And if we, you squint your eyes, you see exactly the same thing. Because it's very, very well organized. So the way this works is that the hair texture, it creates unity. Everything that I'm going to paint like this is going to be like hair. And at the bottom, you see... Every texture, even a texture that is variety, is going to unify something. So if I draw a little circle everywhere on something, it's going to unify that shape. Even though I draw variety, it unifies it. So the trick with this is that everything is well unified, and everything is super different than what's around. <laughs> I also use this for colors. So the way I use color is that I create unity and variety with colors. So I use, for me, color is made out of four things. It's made out of hue, saturation, value, and temperature. So I create unity and variety with these four things. So um, there's a couple example there. So um, let's say for the number three, the main contrast in there is the contrast of value. So the whole image is overall dark, and then you've got a light spot. So there's a unity in this whole image, and then there's a spot that stands out. There's a spot that has more variety. So for this one, it's mainly dark and there's a light spot. But also there's a unity and variety with the saturation. Everything is mainly less saturated and then you got a spot a little more saturated. And also you got, with the use, it's all kind of brown, a bit of blue in there, and then you got an orange spot. 
so I use that a bit everywhere. We'll take the number six as an example. So in there, so use right here, this is the use. The value is here. Saturation goes like that. And temperature is not in there. There's no temperature in Photoshop. So basically, my whole character, all the U's that you have here, they're really close to the red. All these U's are in this area right here. So overall, there's unity in the U's because everything is red or orange, so it's all in the area of this. So um, the background that I have here is it goes from red to green. So my character overall, if you simplify it, um, if you really simplify it at the bottom, you see I just did a red stripe. Overall, the character is red. And my background goes from red to green. So the red-orange on the red-orange creates unity, and the red-orange on the green creates variety. So this way, I can make people look at the edge of the character more. So mainly in this, I'm using a contrast of you to make you look at um, the more the head of the character. I do a color study from uh, master paintings as well, and I use that same uh, principle. So this is a, a painting that I did. And overall, everything's dark. And then you've got one light spot, which is the main character. So basically, the background is dark. The character is light. So there's unity in the background because it's all dark. But within that unity, there's a bunch of little variation. But I don't want the variation to be too varied. I want to keep mainly unity with a tiny little bit of variation. So the background has got a lot of unity and a little bit of variation. So this one, it's mainly desaturated, so there's not much color. And there's one spot that is very colorful and saturated, so it really stands out. So that's mainly a contrast of uh, saturation. And also everything is very light and the flower is a lot darker. So there's a unity and variety with um, the values as well. <coughs> this is a lot like the character I showed you before. Remember the bottom of it was unifying with the background. Here the bottom of the apple is unifying with the table. And the top of the apple is really standing out compared uh, to the table. So I'm using unity and variety in the painting, in the character design, in the texture, in the colors. These are some other paintings. If we would zoom in on those, you would see that it's very rough, but it feels like what it's supposed to feel like. Every element in there has a different balance between unity and variety. There's some more paintings. So now we talk how to use unity in painting. Now we're going to talk how can we use love and gratitude in learning and in painting. So I think uh, you see that little girl. She's pouring a bunch of color and hearts on that little plant. So I think your art skill you have to nurture them like a plant if you want them to grow. And I think the heart is really the seed that your art skill should be uh, rooted on. So you need to, to, um, to, you, to nurture your art skill just like a plant and have them grow. So learning is being grateful. If you want to learn something, you have to give it love and to give it time. So... Um, it's uh, spending time with things. So gratitude is the currency of the universe. I think gratitude is the most important thing. And 
I'm going to talk about love, gratitude, and being present. So when I teach people that come to my workshop, I teach them to paint a cube, a white sphere, and a cylinder. And we spend a lot of time on this. So we study this cube, and I make them paint, ask them to paint in half an hour, a cube that looks so real that I can tell if it's a picture or their painting. So we study every single part of the cube. So basically, we're being present with the cube. We spend time with the cube. We spend time to learn about it. And we learn about subtle variation of values on the plane. On the top, there, even though the top looks flat, there's about a 5% variation in value on this picture. And the front plane, there's also a variation in, in value. There's about a 3% variation. Most people, they don't notice those things. So we're grateful for the cube. We spend a lot of time with it. We learn to appreciate it. And this is a lot like you would develop a relationship with a person. If you want to be a friend with someone, you have to spend time with them. You've got to learn about them. You've got to really appreciate them. And that's, what, that's how, in my opinion, that you learn stuff. A lot of people tell me, I can't draw hands, or I suck at drawing hands. That's because they haven't been grateful enough for hands. Um, if you want to get good at drawing hands, you have to spend time with your hands. You got to look at them. You got to draw them. You got to study the bones they have in it. And you do that. If you hate doing it, that's not going to work as well as if you love doing it and you're really, really interested in your hands. For example, I don't know if you guys know when you fold your fingers, what's the first finger that touched the palm of your hands? with the second finger that touched the palm of your hands. And that goes with spending time with it, being grateful for it, and really appreciating your hands for what they are. So that's why I think love, gratitude, being present with your hands is spending the time, and it's love, and it's being grateful for it. So it's all the same thing, and that's what learning is. Um, you have to give time to what you want to learn, just like you would develop a friendship relation with uh, someone. I think your skills are directly proportional to how grateful you are for something. So artists that are better, better than me is because they have been more grateful for art and they have given more time to art and being more present with art. So, how do we apply all this to art and life? I think the most important thing is to follow your heart. Um, you got to find what makes your heart sing. What makes my heart sing is learning. I love teaching as well. And I try to practice this by following my heart, and I'll show you an example. You have to be present. So, to learn about yourself and who you truly are, you have to be present with you and you have to spend time with yourself. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, what do you want to do today? So I'm my best friend. This sounds like lonely, but uh, I have a lot of other friends too. Um, and you have to be in your heart. So when I start to draw stuff, I draw stuff very small. I draw tiny little thumbnails about uh, this size like this. And uh, it's just fun and quick. And they look like this. And uh, that's how I start something. So I'll give you an example of being in your heart and following your heart. So one day I wanted to paint something and my mind was telling me you should stay inside, you should sit in front of a computer, in front of a blank canvas, and paint something. And my heart, the mind is serious, and the heart is playful and childish, childish like, like a kid. So my heart was telling me, go play the flute, and my mind was telling me, stay in front of your computer and try to paint something. So I followed my heart, and I went outside. 
And in my backyard, there was a turtle digging a hole. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I sat beside the turtle and I started playing the flute. And she didn't seem like she minded me. And I like to think that she appreciated me doing that. And she, she dig a hole, and she dig a hole, and then she laid eggs, and I was playing the flute. And then she buried the eggs, and it was really sweet the way she was doing that, and then she left. So then, after that, I came inside, and I wrote about it, and I did a little thumbnail about it that I'm going to do a painting. So instead of trying to torture me from getting ideas out of my head and from my computer, I just followed my art and I did whatever, but I think everything is one. So to me, playing the flute, going outside is doing art, it's writing. So from this experience, I got something to write about, I got something to paint about, and I have something to tell you guys today. So there's so much that came out of this, and sometimes... The, from point, the shortest way from point A to point B is not the, the best way. Uh, my mind just want to go to do a painting, but my heart is telling me do something completely different, and when I do it, I end up at my goal in an even better way than if I would have tried to force it to go straight. So I think... Nature is a great teacher. I draw a lot of stuff from nature, draw a lot of stuff from life, and I think there's all sorts of stuff that I learned from nature. I learned unity. I learned that everything is one because all the plants, they work in a symbiotic way. They cooperate together. And, you know, I think we're really one with nature because Right now, as a society, we're a little bit rough at putting a lot of pressure on nature and on the planet. But if we destroy the whole planet, we're all going to die. So the planet is exactly, it's like us. If it dies, we die. So we die. So it's like we're one. We have unity with uh, the planet and everything. So I learned to be present. I learn about gratitude, about love. I learn to learn from nature. I eat all sorts of stuff from nature, like it feeds you. I think nature is one of my fav favorite things. And at the bottom, it says that I learned to play the flute from nature. So I got a flute from uh, a friend of mine, and I, try, I never played music before. And I tried to play the flute, and I couldn't play nothing. I was, like, terrible. And then one day, I went outside, and I said, Dear Mother Nature, I would be so grateful if you would teach me how to play the flute. And then she said, Dear my love, just put your mouth at one end of the flute and let your beautiful heart sing. And then I tried and I could play the flute. And uh, I brought my flute. So I never played in front of anyone. So that... <laughs> so this to me is... I find to, to be in your heart and to do art from your heart you have to um, you have to practice to be in your heart. And why I couldn't play the flute before was before because I was trying to play from my mind. And when you try to play for, from your mind, you try to make a specific song. You try you worry about what are people gonna think? Am I gonna look like an idiot when I play the flute? So that's all stuff that comes from the mind. But if you play from the heart. You don't think about anything. You just turn your mind off and you just play the flute, which is super hard right now. But I'll try it. And uh, basically, you guys going to hear my heart sing. So I'll play a tiny little thing. I don't know what I'm going to play. <laughs> So 
So this is an example of me going in my heart and to just let it come out. I don't know how it's going to sound. I don't try to do anything. And I do the same thing when I do art. I just want to have fun. You got to do exercise and learn some skill. But I just want to, I just, this is just a little doodle that I did and I wanted it to be super simple. It's like, I'm not trying to do the best art here. I'm just having fun and it's going to look the way it's going to look. And it's just from the heart. So, you know, the whole talk is called The Artist's Guide to Living a Magical Life. So I think the trick to do to live a magical life is to do everything from the heart. And um, so it's to play. I think I take time every day to do stuff for no reason and to just play like a kid and just to do stuff that I love for no reason at all. So I play. Dancing is uh, an amazing way to be in your heart. I meditate every day. I paint. I'm present. Uh, learning is, uh, is being present. It's being your heart. It's being grateful. You can sing, being grateful. And that's, uh, that's what I think uh, the best thing to make art that is on another level is to really do things from your heart. And when you do stuff from your heart, people are going to feel it. And um, you can do art from your mind, but I think when you do stuff from your heart, it's at a whole different level than from your mind. So my, when I was a kid, I was telling you, I used to drew, draw a whole bunch of uh, little books. So my dream was to make my own books, and right now I'm working on my children's book that I wrote and I'm illustrating, and it's called The Smile, and I should be done doing it uh, probably before the end of the year, and I want the drawings to look like kid drawings, like they're really fun, and uh, it looks like a bit like a, a, a child drew this. And that's, uh, I have a whole series of books that I'm going to pitch. And um, this is my website. And um, learning is what makes my heart sing. Um, I do workshops where people move in with me and live with me for 30 days. And I teach them how to do stuff from the heart and find themselves. And for my past students, I offer an uh, artist residency where they can just come live with me. And also, uh, I do some one-on-one uh, some, uh, -on -one session for art online where you can book a session with me and we Skype and uh, I help people with our art. And I think, I think this is it. Thank you.